Well, welcome everybody. We're so happy that you guys are here tonight. Um, Paul's show um, officially opens tomorrow and it runs through June 5th. The gallery hours are on our website, but I can tell you it's Wednesday through Friday, 12 to five, Saturday, 12 to four. If you can't make it during any of those days, call us, make an appointment, we'll meet you. We can do that as well. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, I covered all that. All right, um, so I, um, this is a show that I curated. I have uh, been looking at Paul's work for, for probably over 20 years. I'm gonna do something now. I'm gonna share my screen. Oh wait, before I do that, sorry. Let me go back here. I'll just say this um, right now because I wanna show you something. <laughs> um, I've been watching his work for, for 20 years or so and I have this postcard from 20 years ago. It is, it's 20 years ago. Um, one of these uh, landscape paintings that um, Paul did, it was a show, um, Gallery 668. And I saved this card for these last 20 years because I, I just, and I, whenever I see Paul's work, I just would look at, seek it out. And I love his work. And that's why I invited him to show at the Lake George Arts Project. And I'm gonna share my screen now. And um, I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek preview. Um, Here's one corner of the gallery. Just want to give you a sense of scale. Here's the other side of the room. Um, um, there's also the work in this exhibition is kind of a, it's more, it's like a tribute to your family. I mean, you, you grew up on a farm. Um, you also have your family history. You've had your grandparents and your parents and your oldest sibling were in the uh, Japanese internment camps during World War II. One side of the room is focused more on agriculture and farm work and the other the side camps. is the camp. Um, is, there a, is there a slide that you think I should pull up first as we go through this? I could start with the farm work. Um, shoulder would be good. Yep, um, okay. And we could start there because I think that um, that's where a lot of people have left off uh, at a show over in uh, at the, through the Opelka Gallery at the Albany. Uh, library and during one winter and um, that was kind of like um, um, my work up to that point um, basically focusing on the uh, incarceration and internment of the Japanese American citizens. Um, it starts out with work because I, I actually didn't wasn't sure how to approach this um, very uh, out of Kind of biographical uh, subject of mine. Um, do I, I, because basically I was born after the war, I was not interned. I missed that part. Um, and um, it was always a curiosity for me. Uh, I am uh, questioning my parents, um, my mother primarily, because she was the only one that was more forthcoming. Um, right. <clears throat> so um, I, I uh, start with this pose because I worked in the field uh, since I was like seven, eight, nine, um, much like uh, um, most farm families do. Uh, all the kids, uh, as soon as you're able to um, clean yourself up and walk steady, you're able to work. Um, so um, I um, basically started um, working in the fields. This, this canvas here, um, race. Um, uh, I grew up on a strawberry farm and um, all the, fam the entire family would work picking strawberries during the summertime uh, from uh, early spring to late summer. And uh, naturally when you're working with your siblings, you're, you want to goof around and make it fun uh, because it's hot and you're sweaty and it's work. Uh, so we would kind of like see who would end, uh, get to the end of the row first or fill up their tray quicker or have the most, uh, be, be the most productive. So this has kind of a, a double, that had a, a kind of a double meaning uh, in that uh, um, with uh, race as the competitiveness and also 
race as the uh, uh, race wars and race segregation type of uh, information that uh, we all uh, sort of cringe at. Um, but, um, and actually when, when uh, Sharon and I visited Oxnard, um, that's where I was uh, raised, or Oxnard, California, um, we noticed that the landscape had not changed very much. A lot of the farms were still there. I could almost name the family farms. Um, even though they might have changed hands, they were still there, present. Um, but uh, in all, throughout the fields, uh, the workers were basically doing the chores, doing the labor, and they had the same exact posture that we had when we were um, doing the labor ourselves. So it uh, really didn't matter if you were Japanese American or Hispanic, uh, Mexican American, um, that's, that's the position you took and that's the kind of um, labor you did. Yep. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to switch around too fast uh, there, but I think while you're talking, I might just pull up some other things that are related to, to what you're talking about. Um, and what's interesting about, well, you're working for over many years, you're working from, from memory, um, from imagination. And this is a, well, I, when you were talked about postures, that's why I brought up reach. There's so many things to talk about. So I don't even know where to begin. So you have a lot of the work. Well, the, first of all, the title is called Go Home. So we've talked about this. You talked about this with Todd Mo on the radio. Um, Go Home is a very charged thing to say, but you also pointed mm -hmm. out that it's about going home. They want to go home. Like there's no, where's home, you know? So. Yeah, so, so naturally the, the, the words uh, uh, is, are used in a uh, kind of hateful manner uh, mm -hmm. to, and it has been used uh, throughout the American history, right? Um, uh, Irish Americans, um, Italians, Italian Americans, they, they were all told to go back where they came from. Um, they were wanted. Um, and all we, we wanted to do uh, as a whole and as a general feeling was that we wanted to make a home. And that's why we were there. Uh, and that's why most immigrants are there, is to make a home and a better life for ourselves. Um, so we, um, I, I've sort of made homesteading kind of a, a theme of mine throughout um, a lot of my paintings. Um, we, we think about home as being a comfort and a sort of self-protection, a nurturing place. Um, and when uh, I read about uh, the history of my parents and grandparents, uh, then all of that is, is like thrown up in the air and, and lost because you are not uh, uh, at home, you are not protected, you're not secure. Everything is basically ripped from you and you're sent away to, to uh, a prison camp. Right. So everything is tenuous. You can't, uh, it seems like we can't take everything, anything for granted, right? Yeah. Um, things could be, laws could be passed yeah. as we've kind of like seen in the last uh, five years. Um, and very quickly things can change and get out of hand. Yeah. Um, I, I did have this one image um, that um, I pulled up uh, just before the last one. Uh, just to, I, I want to just bring it up to note that when you all come to visit the gallery, <laughs> you'll see, you can see all the work in person and you'll notice the titles are, you know, they're often a one word title that implies so much. Um, I do want to go back to the one I was just at, No Home, because that relates to exactly what you were just talking about. Yeah, so, so again, the, um, these are hardly homes and um, no matter what kind of uh, pu public relations uh, um, barrage that uh, uh, the government was giving at the time of the war um, and photographs by um, great photographers like uh, Dorothea Lange and Ansel Adams, um, people were not happy. They were not uh, satisfied with being there. Uh, they certainly did not want to be there at all. Um, they weren't treated very well uh, compared to where they came from. They, a lot of, um, out of the 120,000 um, uh, Japanese Americans, both citizens and um, 
alien uh, Americans that were residents legally, um, they were not they they were not treated well. Um, the food was awful. The um, um, the barracks uh, were sparse. Uh, it, you could barely have enough to um, uh, keep warm in these uh, very cold environments. Um, the, um, the food, it was kind of like a central mess hall, uh, central uh, latrines and showers, no privacy at all. Um, and if you know anything about um, uh, Asian or Japanese Americans as, as I do, um, uh, they're very, um, you know, private. Uh, uh, they're not open to um, showing themselves very, very well mm -hmm. or often. Um, so th this was, um, Lookout was, was sort of like, uh, sort of painted after a, um, an image I saw of a, a, a Japanese American who was interned an artist. Um, I found out he was, uh, his name was Obata, um, Chirua uh, Obata. He had a, um, a retrospective at the Smithsonian in uh, 2020. Uh, he's passed away, but I, I used this, I sort of appropriated this vantage point uh, to show the scope and immensity of, of this uh, internment camp. How many people, how many, uh, how large it was, and also the the, um, uh, the siting of it, where it was located um, in this uh, harsh desert landscape with um, the mountainous barriers that surrounded them. Yeah. And in, um, in the gallery, we do have an introduction uh, panel in the, when you first walk in. And actually, I don't have a photo of that for this Zoom talk. Uh, there's three photos of your family are your grandparents and then your parents and then this uh, photo with, um, I don't know where you got that photo Poston. from. Yes, yeah, a poster. It was, it was brand new structures, yeah. uh, uniform in size, uh, all in a row, uh, yeah. very much a reminiscent of military barracks. Right, uh, just like this painting. I mean, the, you know, the paintings, uh, the photographs are di very different than this painting, but you really get this sense of um, how many how many barracks there were, and um, what one thing that um, I mean so so you're you're over the years you've been looking at into your family history over this about uh, what happened what your relatives ancestors were went through they were asked to leave their home in California on very short notice they had to give up so much uh, what was it two week notice. Uh, it was supposed to be at least two weeks. Um, a lot of people uh, did not get the message until you got, uh, um, uh, some had 48 hours yeah. to gather their things, belongings, um, sell their home, sell their property, unless, unless they had someone to take care of it. Right. Um, I've read accounts where uh, people uh, lost everything. Uh, yeah. they, they just dropped everything and left. Um, with anything, uh, things that they could only carry. Yeah. So you know, it's this is it's it's a it's your family history, but it's also it's it's our history too as a, as the United States. And what I found striking as we were preparing for the show that there's um, a lot of people don't know about this um, this history. It seems like it has, you know, there's not. It's <laughs> people just don't want to remember. It's just. It yeah. happened, and it happened not that long ago. Um, so it's, I just find that striking. Um, well, you're not alone. A, a lot of my colleagues, a lot of uh, people I talk to here in upstate New York, uh, uh, this part of our history was not taught, at least it not, was not covered in depth. Right. Um, and uh, that, that really struck me when I uh, moved here with Sharon in 1990 from California. Yeah. Um, one of the things that really struck me about uh, the people of upstate New York, uh, I was walking on, the, on, I think it was New Scotland in Albany, and I passed by this guy that basically turned around and shouted at me, and he, and he said in his um, best New York way, greeting, yo, and he, I said, yeah, you're talking to me, and he said, yeah, yeah, so what are you? And uh, 
I said, well, I'm uh, a man, I'm a human, I'm an American. <laughs> what? And he says, yeah, 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 I, I, I get that. But it's like me, I'm, I'm Cuban, Cuban Japanese. And I go, oh, okay, I'm Japanese American. Arizona, I was born in Arizona, raised in California. That right. seemed satisfying. She said, okay, got yeah. it. <laughs> I was going to say, when you said, are you talking to me? I was thinking in Italian, you know, but. <laughs> At that time, I knew the proper response in New York. So. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah it's not funny. Yeah. But so it's, you know, it's a, it's a history that's uncomfortable, but I, I, um, you know, this is what, what you're doing. This is art. This is life. Um, your personal history. What have I not? So here's another one I'd like to pull up. Um, oh, that's again, great. I, uh, there's so there's such striking images, and you know Paul is working off of you know memory and imagination, um, and, and the figures I'm, I'm are not physical pain and memory at my back, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> my knees, right. uh, in the race to plant those strawberries. Um, yeah. But they're so beautiful, and they're so they're really like there's it's pretty potent stuff that's that you're examining and, and reflecting on but as far as a really kind of really sad history if, for your family and for this country but um they're so beautiful i mean these these they, they feel heroic to me oh. um this person you know struggling in that bent over posture but this one as in a uh, promise pull that one um you know, they, they just seem like really um, dignified, um, you know, people. And you've, you and I have talked a lot um, over the, you know, while we're planning this show. And um, there's, it's, it's a, you've talked about it as being more like a tribute to your family. Um, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? You know, very, very much in the same way as the uh, WPA artists uh, depicted life in this new country of ours, right? And so I kind of thought that this was a, a somewhat a noble uh, um, venture that these uh, my ancestors came to America to uh, carve out a new beginning and a new life for themselves um, because uh, the old country um, was not sporting them. It was um, 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 economically not, uh, not viable. So uh, coming here, they did what they knew best and uh, they were able to thrive and succeed. Um, and that, that sort of uh, points to the other half of the, the exhibition, the incarceration, where they were stopped abruptly at this climb towards um, uh, their uh, middle class, maybe the success. Uh, they, they weren't able to realize that they were basically set back all of a sudden four years. Uh, uh, if you think about you being stopped in your the middle of your um, uh, say schooling from from college and just say no you can't graduate yet you're gonna have to wait four years um, and uh, start all over again yeah it's sort of like that uh, so uh, that I really wanted to to exemplify to show the uh, the dignity in which they um, uh, they um, presented themselves during this this time of really. Uh, harsh conditions. Yeah. Um, yeah, posturing has a lot to do with it. Uh, this one is about um, looking over the, the the open field and trying to uh, uh, conceptualize, maybe visualize where the crops were going to be planted and and how the acreage was going to be divided. Um, I I used to work my, with my father when I was. Um, about 12, and I, I saw him sketching on a piece of cardboard uh, and plotting out um, the, where the location of each berry field would, would be, uh, and, and the irrigation and the access roads and such. All of that had to be planned out and designed. And uh, I, was, I was kind of impressed by his knowledge of that. Uh, and well, he was the foreman, but uh, I, you know, I, he was my dad, I just thought, you know, how, how does he know all this stuff? Um, <laughs> but he did, and uh, it came out right. Uh, he, he was out there surveying the, the grounds, and uh, uh, I had to hold up that um, surveying stick for him oh, yeah. uh, while, while he uh, measured and, and plotted out the, 
the yeah. problem. Yeah, I mean, this is really hard work and it's, you, you really have to um, plan. You have to have a lot of knowledge about growing things. Um, I'm trying to think, what, what have I missed? There's a couple of things that, oh, here's something that we didn't show yet. Um, this kind of harkens back to my postcard. These, you know, some of your landscapes, they're just um, kind of imply, I mean, this is a pretty harsh landscape. You had mentioned that, so they came from California and they were sent to Poston, which is in Ari the heat of the Arizona sun and really wasn't farming country either. Um, yeah, so this, this one here, um, I kind of had fun with. Uh, I, I started off with uh, the, the landscape, um, the mountains, uh, and knowing that I was going to symbolize this barrier, this physical um, barrier that they were surrounded by. Um, and then I added the trenches uh, just, just because I wanted to show the potential uh, the, the potential of the land, uh, yeah. of, uh, of the, the, the land and the, the, uh, the furrows yeah. uh, waiting to be sown with, um, with uh, product and, and plants. Um, um, and also, before I switch over, because time flies, before I switch over to the chat room, I just want to show a couple of works on paper. Oh, wait, no, I do want to, I don't remember if I showed this one. Um, this that is was a an early one, actually, uh, earlier. I did. Okay. Uh, notice um, that th these have windows, uh, but no doors. I I sort of vacillated between uh, showing the structure because I, I thought the structure was so um, charged. You know, uh, number one, it, it looks like a profile of a house, a typical house, um, but uh, they weren't houses. Uh, they weren't homes, uh, very much so. And so the, the later incarnation of these became uh, strictly no windows, no doors, just basically a, a physical uh, structure. Um, right. Another view of that structure that's in the gallery is, you know, it's a wooden framework um, with tar paper stapled to it, which as you and I, you know, what I learned from you is that that was basically what they were made of. There wasn't insulation. Here they are in the desert, hot, desert, cold at night desert, um, it's... Yeah, um, sort of like the way that the, and we all know the government, the way they um, basically hand out uh, construction contracts and things like that. Quick, fast, cheap, uh, get it done and uh, make your deadline and get out. Uh, so these thing, these structures were basically that. Uh, uh, Greenwood framed, uh, uh, timber framed uh, houses, structures, barracks, uh, covered with tar paper and batting. Yeah. Uh, before we go to chat, I want to show, um, we've got three works on paper, um, stunning ink drawings. They're just absolutely gorgeous. Um, so here's one, of course, here's the barracks again. Um, and then you also have these two other pieces. If, if you go back there, I just want to comment and other yeah. people have asked. Uh, it, it looks almost like this is kind of like a those old um, gelatin photographs. Uh, that was a, kind of a happy accident. I kind of used a, um, a Sumi brush, kind of like the mop one, and yeah. they, they washed it. And and I think that the paper had some sort of oil in it, and it yeah. kind of resisted. And I let it set up, and then I drew into it with the, with the ink brush. Beautiful. We we um, painters love happy accidents, right? That's <laughs> that's what um, we live for. Um, it's deciding to keep that happy accident that counts. Um, <laughs> also, uh, another ink drawing. And um, what I love about these is this, um, you know, this, these abs abstract cloud wash. They're a wash, but it's a cloud shape. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you know, this looming, intimidating. Um, and here's another one. Yeah, in the past, I, I have used uh, cloud shapes and... Um, and clouds that formed uh, a human shape to represent some sort of a uh, overriding spirit of um, watching over these um, these uh, structures or the land and the farm. Um, you know, I apologize. I'm so sorry, but I just got noticed that I'm low on battery. Give me two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I love this. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one that does that. Just <laughs> so I, uh, um, yeah, get back to the, the uh, ink wash and uh, I, I, um, I actually studied uh, at Otis Art Institute with uh, Matsumi Kanemitsu. He was a, a wonderful, amazing, um, a modernist uh, Japanese uh, sumi brush artist, master. And uh, I believe actually he was uh, interned in Poston as well. Uh, uh, so uh, he, uh, even though I didn't study with him under his painting, I had a few classes couple of conversations and critiques. Um, while I was studying art, I really didn't want to go in that or, or tap into my um, Japanese American roots. I uh, thought that I should uh, carve my way as an artist rather than a particular artist, uh, um, a particular um, kind of artist, I guess, Japanese artist. And I just didn't want to go in that way. Um, and uh, it, 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 I'm only finding now that it's, uh, it's kind of necessary for me to sort of like understand who I am, first of all, and for me to go forward from there. Yeah. Uh, so I think it was really uh, necessary for me to sort of like uh, dig deep into to why I wanted to be uh, an artist. And, uh, and I am Japanese, you know, American, so I, I can't deny those things. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, I mean, I, you know, as you go through your career, you constantly questioning things and, you know, you, you are who you are. And um, I think that, you know, but, but I mean, I've been following you for a long time I and mean, you've been, you keep returning to your, your family history. Um, but I think even in the ones that I talked about from 20 years ago, you, you know, all of that's in there. I mean, there's kind of a, you know, a mix of this, um, you know, maybe not clearly your family history, but there's some, they're very psychologically charged landscapes, I think, um, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, early on, I've, I've done things with elements like waters, clouds, air, land. Um, um, and um, I think that uh, I've, I've been sort of battling uh, depression for uh, many years. And uh, um, I think that entered into it. I was uh, kind of, um, projecting a lot of emotional mm -hmm. uh, images in that respect. Yeah, most likely why I relate to them. <laughs> um, yeah, they're, they're just powerful images. So, you know, Paul, what I think I'm going to do now, because it's 730, I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen. Okay. And I'll let everybody know that you, um, if you want to turn your video on, that's, that's fine, because we love to see your faces. So hello. Um, and unless, um, I think the way we'll do this, if we, if we, we're going to go to chat, it's just easier. Um, and if we need you to elaborate, we'll yeah. unmute you, if you for your question. So um, I can see the chat right now. And um, let's see. So, um, okay, so Scott, um, Scott Brody. Hello, Scott. Um, Paul, such move, moving and beautiful work. The color is very provocative. Uh, the creamy soft colors with flashes of intensity and even acidic tones. Can you talk a minute uh, about your choices of color? Well, I, I kind of um, go with colors that I've had success with uh, so that I can do a series and I basically used um, uh, the same tubes that uh, uh, for each one of the, you know, the azure blue, uh, uh, the lake uh, magentas, and the umbers, and and um, and I basically used that throughout, and because uh, I didn't want to um, screw anything up because I was on deadline, you know what I mean? And uh, that that was kind of like a a way for me to get into this production mode of producing the thing it works. Uh, but thank you, thank you. And um, so here's a question from Susan. Uh, can you speak to the dreamy, weightless, and mysterious quality of the images? Oops, I just lost that. 
Um, of People the, have no features, no furrows, no plants or life. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, I wanted it to be uh, uh, very kind of minimal uh, in, in a way with that. You know, it's hard. Uh, I started off being an action painter and um, uh, I was uh, all about uh, the gesture and about the brush strokes and I love brush strokes. Uh, uh, but um, when it came to uh, representing, uh, going, making figurative and narrative, um, the, the storytelling, I wanted it to be a lot more universal rather than particular. Right. Um, that's why it was, even though it was about the Japanese American experience um, and a tribute to them, I chose not to identify them as much um, to make it a little bit more uh, universal. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Not anonymous, but uh, universal. Yeah, I'm just gonna share um, the screen one more time. Um, I think that Susan had a, a good point there because um, these these uh, workers in the field could be um, of any race, of any you know ethnic background. I you know I, I early on I studied uh, this guy, um, um, a um, painter in, in California, uh, Boris Deutsch, and he was a WPA artist. Uh, he did a mural in uh, the Los Angeles Terminal Annex uh, uh, post office, and he did something really cool. Uh, he it was obviously uh, figurative. Uh, he used himself as the model. All, so all of the, the male characters had his features and all the female fe features uh, were, were portrayed by his wife, his wife's uh, face. Uh, and so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but I didn't want to go that route. Right. <laughs> I was just struck by that uh, yep. interesting way. And we have another question from, um, um, so as a Japanese American uh, who is also an artist, do you know who this is? Uh, yeah. Yes, I think I do. Uh, she's she's done this wonderful um, project called the Yellow Bowl Project. Oh, good. So, so she 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 in, visited, uh, uh, and photographed and documented uh, the bowl at different- Can you hear me? Oh yeah, hi. hi. Okay. So Sorry, my name's Setsko, and I just I just really love his work. I think it's so powerful. And um, I'm an artist, and I've also didn't know a lot of this history, and I've spent 10 years looking into it as a journalist, not so much Japanese American, but just to learn about American history. And um, one of the interesting things, you talk about that that landscape, which is so desolate and they're trying to build furrows. It's uh, one of the people that brought the plan to try to remove Japanese Americans um, because groups like the Grange or you know, uh, white farming uh, unions wanted to remove the successful Japanese farmers who had taken marginal land and had made it extremely profitable. So Japanese people were only 2% of California but they were producing 40% 40, 40 of all the produce in 1942. So there was a lot of people who desired the land. And Thomas Campbell was in the Department of Interior. And oddly enough, he was in charge of Native American land, right? Which was the Department of Interior was part of the Department of War. So essentially Native Americans were prisoners of war. And that was one of the first places that was thought of to put the Japanese Americans because no governor of any state wanted these people in their, in their state. So they were originally you know, put on Native American land and event, I think only two most, most Native American tribes said, we do not want to do to another group of people what was done to us. And they said, no, but two of them did because they were offered infrastructure he said, if we give you pipes and we give you all this stuff, you know, we'll give you, um, we'll, so it's kind of, they don't like to talk about it because they feel it's shameful, but the two places were Poston and Gila River. And, um, and the irony is that after the war, the, the, um, the government actually removed infrastructure, houses, uh, buildings, pipes, um, to build 
you know, homes and cities for the returning soldiers. So it's, it's kind of a, you know, it's another promise that was broken to the Native Americans. So anyway, um, I just, I just, uh, it's just the stories that are buried in this, this whole history is just so indicative of a pattern of laws and behavior that was that was done by um, the government, you know, for for a long time. So it, it's I think it's time to come out, and I, I love what Paul is doing. I think it's really amazing. Thank you. And, and Setsko's uh, website is full of uh, information in her writing about the the history uh, in great detail. And in fact, uh, oh, thank you so much. Uh, called so the Yellow Bowl Project. Called, yeah, it's called the yellow www.yellowbowlproject.com. I'm going yeah. to actually mute you just so I can. Yeah, uh, sure. There's a lot of noise in the background. So, but yeah, thank so you. It was fantastic to get your um, feedback and and uh, your response. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, so, uh, yellowbowlproject.com. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And I have, I did have another message. From okay, um, Stephen asked Paul, "Thank you for bringing bringing forth these deeply reflective and heartfelt paintings." It's more of a comment. Um, and then um, David says, uh, "Hello, everyone. Nice to see all of you." David Brickman, I just want to mention, in case you didn't know, that there is an, an exhibition on view right now at the Fenmore Museum in Cooperstown of Ansel Adams ph photographs from uh, Manzanar, which is the one of the more famous, of the, like post in the uh, Japanese internment camp in California. Um, it resonates with Paul's work. Um, I think that was, um, okay, thanks, David. That's great, great information. Fenmore's not that far, well, if you're in New York State, it's not that far away. Uh, well, depending where you are in New York State. Um, Eric says, um, thank you, Paul, for sharing your work with all of us. My maternal grandfather and his family were from Mexico and cotton sharecroppers in Texas. Now I want to ex explore and learn more about the unknown part of my family's history. Thanks, Eric, for, for sharing that. And then uh, Vicki, Vicki Palermo, Paul, your vision is so focused in these paintings. Do you feel that your vision is more influenced by photos or by the inherited family history? I love the dreamlike, dreamlike quality and minimal organization of form in these paintings, stunning and moving. I really was tapping into um, uh, my my sort of uh, cellular memory, if I could, um, and about um, uh, my time on the farm with my family. I I think that that had a lot to do with it, um, and um, and naturally a lot of books and and uh, historic books, wonderful books. Um, and if um, and if I could uh, just one other um, book that was uh, really wonderful, uh, uh, an artist, uh, Mine Okubo, uh, Citizen 1366. Uh, wonderful illustrations. Uh, she was actually uh, in the camp and, and uh, sketching all the time and jotting down in, in journalistic form about her experiences there. Uh, very frank uh, and uh, revealing. Uh, the name of the book is Citizen. One three six six zero Mine Okubo O K U B O uh, is is the artist. It's an illustrated book, uh, but with great insight and and a journalistic so style. Um, while you were answering that question, I just wanted to bring up my um, my screen share again because. Um, the uh, you know what Vicky was commenting on um, th there's some you know the these are not from photographs they're they're from your memory and a lot of inventive um, imagination um, you know just this the way <laughs> I love the water in here and now if you were looking at a photograph you would never paint water that way you'd never see this reflection in the trenches. Um, and I just, just you know, I guess it is a dreamlike quality to it. Uh, I I didn't mean it that way. In a way, I wanted it to be uh, atmospheric, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it, uh, you, uh, those of you that have been in uh, Southern California, it, it is a very uh, clear, uh, clean air, 
um, and um, very dry climate. Um, so you can see a lot of details from far away. Uh, and um, the definitely the, the way that the, uh, uh, the soil erosion occurs is very telling in this, uh, in that, uh, in that manner, the way that they're shaped yeah. and sculpted. But they're not, they're not super realistic. Um, well, it's my recollection of um, yeah. the West Coast, I guess, yeah. um, because I, in that respect, I, I miss it. I, uh, I, I love where I am now. I, and uh, I love all the people that I, I met and made friends with here. Um, but I do miss the, the, the landscape there. Uh, not that I want to go back and live there because there's too many damn people, but uh, I, I really, it, it is just a fabulous place to just look at and stare at the landscape, especially the desert. Yeah. When we were installing the show, um, we were just talking about, you know, what, um, I mean, you're not in, in front of this world anymore. So you really are resorting to an imagined place in memory, you know, memory from either from what you've heard a little bit from your childhood. And then you're just, you're making up a lot of elements of that landscape to, yeah, to compose your, your story. It's perfect for me because I, I, you know, I get to mess around with it. I don't have anything to uh, look at and make, make it uh, precise. I just have to make it look sort of like mountains. <laughs> right. And you do that very well. They're, they're so beautiful. <laughs> and I try um, to make it more expressive than actual a site. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it's more of a, a symbol of, of barriers and things that they had to over, overcome yeah. in what's uh, surrounding them in, in, on the farm. Yeah, which I think that, you know, you're, you're you're a painter first, I think. I mean, you're you're documenting some family history here, but um, you know, I invited you because I love your paintings. I frankly, I wasn't sure what you were going to show, and I didn't know if um, I knew that you dipped into this your family history here and there, um, but a lot of these paintings doesn't they don't they're not a lecture, they're not a history lesson, they're paintings, you know. Um, you know, I, I, um, I sort of like straddled this idea that, that I should uh, paint this story and uh, put it out there for other people to look at and, and question and uh, raise questions about what happened. Uh, and I, I, I was vacillated a lot. Um, uh, first of all, I didn't want it to be illustrative. I wanted it to be a painting. Mm -hmm. um, even though it's narrative uh, I, and figurative, I didn't want it to be uh, completely realistic, if you know what I mean. It's, it's, a, it's more of an expressive ideas, uh, memory, and, uh, um, and that's what I, the way I, I sort of uh, yeah. you know, went with it. Well, as we were putting the show together, we were talking a little bit about just that, like it's the, the kind of the curse of the representational painter is, uh, is, am I being too illustrative, you know, for whatever that means. And um, I don't know what it means. It doesn't, your paintings are just beautiful. They're, they're unique. They're, um, I mean, they're, you know, the work speaks for itself. They're just gorgeous. Um, but before I get to, I don't want to keep talking. I want to give other people. Um, so I have another question. Uh, uh, Scott says the history of the history of Japanese internment is horrific. Is there a conflict for you between the beauty and richness of the painting to the ug ugliness of the internment? I see conflict in your use of color. Well, that's interesting. Well, yeah. It. it um, okay. So I told you that I I um, I had this history of depression and and I all I did a lot of gray paintings and. Um, um, monochromatic paintings. I didn't want to go there and make it completely uh, um, as somber as that. I wanted them to be a attractive paintings, um, vibrant color and, um, and expressive. So I, I think I went in that direction rather than in the more uh, sad emotion because um, even though it is a dark time in our history, uh, there's something to be um, understood about the resilience of the people and of 
of the kind of land that they've um, and and the work that they did, and so I wanted it to look lively and um, and beautiful. Yeah, yeah. As as you and I talked, there's that one painting called Promise that I told you. It I every time I look at it, I think of my grandmother in Ireland, even though it's a different landscape, obviously. But there's something about her posture and her pose, and uh, just just the way she's standing. Um, here's another uh, comment. I'm reminded of figures by Edward Hopper when I looked at your paintings. I love Edward Hopper. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it, Edward Hopper's light and the way that his light is directed and um, helps model the figure. Mm -hmm. it's, it's gorgeous. It's kind of romantic in a way, in a lot of ways, uh, and that's what I love about it. Yeah. Um, I, and that and again the, to Scott's point. Yeah. Is this a a romantic tale, yeah, yeah, kind of. It, if you use paint and you want to you know, um, tell a story, I guess that's the way to do it, right? So that it becomes attractive and you're you're drawn into it, and then you get the story uh, as a sort of a second secondhand thing. Yeah, uh, you know, I actually was when, as a as we were planning this show, I was thinking, you know, what what does this remind me of? And and, and you know, Hopper actually. Um, is you know an American artist, um, you know, but I, and also like Hopper's figures are a little bit clunky sometimes for me, um, and and there's we talked about this when we had lunch last week. You, I feel like your figures are treated with a, a, a great deal of empathy. Um, I don't see that in Hopper. <laughs> I mean, Hopper's landscapes are gorgeous. I mean, most of his, I mean, I'm a big Hopper fan, but I don't feel a sense of empathy to his figures, you know? And I think um, on some level, I see the similarity. I know um, who, who I can't remember who said that. Um, I think it was Linda. Um, but you're more like a, like, I'm even like a Milton Avery or there's something about how you treat the figure that I feel like you're, oh, there's a great Alice Neal show up. I mean, you're not depicting them the same way with that intensity of features and, um, but um, they're just treated with a lot of empathy, I think. They're- Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, I think we're gonna wrap it up because we've gone a little bit over our time, but, um, but Michael says, great paintings, great talk. The work demonstrates your wonderful talent and your deep feelings for your subject. Um, so thank you everybody for showing up for this Zoom talk. Um, we will be open tomorrow from 12 to five and check our website for the gallery hours. Thanks for being here. Paul, thank you so much. It's a fantastic show. So it's- Thank you for always... having me. And it's been great seeing all, all your faces. Yeah, it you really has. In person soon, very soon. Yep. So we've had, well, we had a great turnout tonight. Um, yeah, scrolling through here. Perfect, lovely. Thank you, everybody. So I'm gonna end this meeting now and we'll see you all soon. Hopefully not in Zoom land, hopefully in person. Okay, Bye. good night everyone.